Karen Kumar has decades of experience working in human resources, training, coaching, and counseling. At a certain point, she realized she had also become what society has deemed as the unseen, a woman over 50. In taking a different path, Kumar sought to help women of all cultures and backgrounds shed that cloak of invisibility and change the narrative to fight against ageism. Through courses, masterclasses, and a podcast, she is helping women regain their power, stand tall, and redefine what it means to be a woman over 50. Welcome, Kieran. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. So remember the first time that you experienced ageism? I wouldn't say specifically ageism. I think it's being a woman of a certain age and colour. That's always been challenging, especially when I was in my corporate life. I was a trainer, a project program manager, delivering projects across the world, e-commerce projects that were for high-flying clients. I found all of that quite challenging because as being a woman of colour and being of a certain age put a lot of pressure on me because I was brought in to deliver change, high-level projects, create change, and that just became difficult. The challenges of been there for a while I restarted my career at 40 and I think that was okay ish but it had its own challenges and then once we hit COVID to go back into the workplace wasn't an option because I had a two-year gap I tried to apply for jobs and I was told well where have you been you know why you've got a gap and you think well we've been in COVID um where have you been <laughs> I also realized that being much older was going to have its own challenges. So yes, I think invisibility is much more as, as time passes and you just think, well, what am I going to do now? I realized I had to do something different. I had to do something because I still got whatever um, 10 years of my life left. I had to live a life with purpose because there's so many changes that happened at 52 for me. I just thought I've got to do something different. So there you are. Can you explain how that feels? I know how it feels, but can you put into words from your own perspective how that feels to be ignored and disregarded because oh, you're too old or whatever? <laughs> It feels completely lousy. I mean, it just feels awful. You've got value regardless and you've got decades of experience and that is overridden by, I don't know, other people's egos or whatever it may be. And that you feel quite deflated. I also felt quite angry, you know, because I have a brain, I have a voice and I wasn't allowed to speak. And I wasn't allowed to say what I thought. So when you're disempowered, which I felt, I felt I lost my voice. As time went on, that was kind of worse. You have all those symptoms, don't you? You have anger, anxiety, stress, frustration. All of those kind of negative emotions come into play when I used to go home and go, have a glass of wine please because I was feeling so wound up about not being heard not being seen you know disregarded I felt lost in my professional life but I also felt the same in my personal life that's what brought me to really where I am now the other aspect of it too is that you almost feel like people are treating you like a child <laughs> we sort of see you over there but don't speak well, of, I think it's more like being children. treated. It's more being treated like if you're stupid, really, that you yeah. haven't got any sense and that you mm -hmm. haven't got a voice. Also, that it's not seen. You're not seen. You're not heard. You're made to feel stupid, and that's totally disempowering. I'm not one to kind of hide away. I'm one to fight. The whole my whole business has been about bring ahead. It's a lion because my mom saw me as a lion, and hence. I'm a bit fiery, right? The fact that I was being treated this way, I wasn't accepting of it. I wasn't accepting of it at all. It just leaves you with negative emotions which aren't going to do you any good. And I just think there's a way to come back. And I wasn't going to accept 
what people were doing or, or saying, etc. I had to, I realized I had to take a different path. And especially if you've had a thriving career and you've been regarded very high in your profession and all of a sudden it's like, uh, hello, I'm over here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but also, is this just a Western cultural thing? Because the indigenous in Canada, they respect their elders. Mm -hmm. They go to their elders for guidance. And we do not do that here in Western mm. society, it seems. I think the times are changing. I think there are communities that respect their elders, definitely. But I think times are changing, even like in Eastern cultures. But certainly of the West, I would say that you are disregarded as you get older. You're not seen at all. People see past you, see beyond you, don't hear you don't want to hear you. I think that narrative has been around, but having said that, I wasn't conscious of it until yeah. I got that to, my, to this age, right? I hadn't yeah. thought about it because of being born in an Indian culture, an Indian society, you respected your elders. That was the way I was brought up. <clears throat> but in the wider world, that isn't the case. You become conscious of that as you reach that kind of pinnacle age and you realize, uh oh, something has to change here because I'm not going to disappear from the landscape. I'm going to have to make my mark. And, I'm, and as you know, I am making my mark. For me personally, was no, I'm not going to accept this. It's not accepting. I'm not going to accept what norm normal behavior is about. Moving on from that. And of course, HR departments describe this because it's illegal to ask per a person for their age. So they describe it as, oh, you're overqualified <laughs> mm. and I, and all you want is a damn job, but you're overqualified for it. So do you find that if you are going after a position, do you have to dumb down your resume so that you don't look as old as you do? <laughs> well, I don't think that applies to me anymore because I realized from COVID, there was no way I was going to go back into the workplace. There was no way I was going to be accept accepted in the workplace. But also, I didn't want to go back. I didn't want to go back. I want to start all over again in my career where I've spent 30 years, <laughs> three decades, building up my career and then suddenly finding out that I have to go back to the beginning. That's not going to happen because it's a slap in the face it's taking away everything that you've ever done I don't think anyone has a right to strip away somebody's experience somebody's voice somebody's kind of know-how no one has a right to do that so I realized that I had to step into my own safe place and be charged of my own life and destiny and that's exactly what I'm doing because I hadn't thought about starting a business at 58 but I have I hadn't thought about starting a podcast at 58 but I have and I know that if you want to make a difference you've got to step forward and that's exactly what I'm doing so before you stepped into this journey and you were trying to figure this out did retirement scare you no, I was kind of welcoming because let me just kind of give you a little bit of brief history because in 2019, I decided that I was going to end my career because I was under a lot of stress. Uh, thought of going to Barcelona and retiring and kind of tried it out for a month and then COVID hit. Had to all, everybody had to, came back home. We were all under lockdown for almost two years of our lives. Coming out of COVID, it was, okay, a lot of changes had happened in my personal life. I'd left my husband at 52. I was still living in the same town as my ex-husband. That isn't conducive to healthy living. <laughs> I just felt that I had to get out of that place. So in 2021, I actually moved from the place I had been living in for almost 30 years. I moved to a brand new town, new city, and just packed up and left. That was kind of very interesting. And then, so I realized that I wasn't going to retire because I had to, we all have need money till we die. I had to do something. 
and I wasn't prepared to go back into the workplace. So the resume question has never come up because I wasn't going to go backwards. Because if I, that's what you just said, Debbie, you know, go backwards, I'll say, well, you're overqualified. No, I'm not. <laughs> or what have you been doing for the last ten, five years? Well, trying to get a job, mate, kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it was going to, it was going to be harder than, it wasn't going to be worth the effort, really. I just felt that I had to take a different path. When something isn't right for you, and there are women, their options are limited. They may not have the courage to do a podcast or whatever, and they have to get a retail job or a service industry job. And it may not feel like a choice to them, but what would you say to some of these women who, they know the job isn't perfect or they know it might even be toxic, but they kind of feel they don't have a choice. That's really interesting because I think we're limited by our thinking. I wouldn't have thought about a podcast. I wouldn't have thought about starting a business at 58. It wasn't something on the radar. Leaving my husband at 52, that takes strength and courage and to go from the known to the unknown completely. So what I would say to women is that you're limited by your thinking. And if you think outside, some things you can't change. So then there isn't a place to go. But I still think there's options around. And you have to explore those options. I mean, I've been through so much crap that <laughs> I've been so through so much rubbish, but I hadn't realized my own potential. And I don't think people know what their potential is. But if you open up your thinking and open up your mind and have a growth mindset, then you can move forward. You can look at options. As I said, I wasn't thinking of a podcast a year ago. I wasn't thinking of starting my business a year ago. And here we are. This is where we are now. I'm in a much better place because I kind of opened up to the options and thought, where can I go? And then what? One thing leads to another. The first step leads to a second step, to a third step, and then you're on your path. And before you know it, you're somewhere completely different. And one of the things that I have learned as I got older that is really hard to expose upon the younger women is that the older you get, your give a crap meter goes lower. Stuff that we used to fret over and worry about and, oh my God, what if they think I did that wrong? Now we like, oh, well, who cares? I think that's <laughs> true. Like it, I, mean, like it. <laughs> I mean, I've kind of been like that most of my life, but having got to this age and I give yourself permission to, do, to say that, you know, I don't care and <laughs> give a crap what anybody else is thinking. I don't give a, give a crap whether anybody likes me or not. I don't give a crap about X, Y, Z. Right. So it opens up the doors to allow you to do anything. Well, almost do anything. And <laughs> you're giving yourself permission to be yourself. And I honestly think now at this age, I am me, my true, true self, because I've stripped away everything else that kind of hindered me in my past. I moved on from toxic people. That's what I had to do. And even when I meet people who don't connect with, you go, well, thank you very much, but I'm moving on from this. And I think if you get to that age when you think, yes, this is my true self, and I want to remain true to myself. And that's really key for me because I have to answer to me. I need to be happy in myself. And I feel that I have got to that stage. And of course, the other aspect of it is when we were in our 20s or earlier, there were no options. We couldn't get a bank account. We couldn't get a car loan. We couldn't even get divorced. And there's so many things that people take for granted today that they were they were not a thing. It's not that long ago we weren't even able to vote. So I think maybe that plays in how our <laughs> give a crap meter gets lower <laughs> i don't know i think everybody every generation has its kind of limitations and boundaries and not even just a generation it could be a community things might be happening in the world but within your own community you're confined but i'll be honest so had i stayed in my marriage i would have been confined by still the rules and, and regulations of that society even though we're living in a modern world but because I decided at 52, <laughs> no sooner, but 52 right to on. move on, <laughs> to move on, I have now 
opened those doors and it's changed everything about me, my life and my future. Yes, in the world today, people are confined, not by the world, but by their societies. Since the beginning of time, older women have really been underrepresented in media, pop culture and movies, the one dimensional character and TV and film. But they haven't just been underrepresented, they have been unrepresented. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. zero presence. It is changing a little bit. Do you see it drastically changing or is this last? little bit that we're going to journey into is this where that really happens it is changing and is a changing slowly and the whole the whole idea of my podcast is to increase or speed up and bring that narrative to the forefront and to spotlight and showcase women who are making a difference and who are not invisible right who are doing as amazing amazing work people just need to speak up people need to make a noise because if we accept what is what society is saying then you're going to be invisible but if you dare yourself to speak and show up then you're actually showing an, an indifferent example of what a 50 year old woman looks like or how a 50 year old woman is behaving or how she sees herself and that's what it's all about i'm 59 in march and i feel stronger i go boxing yeah red gloves right so boxing i do pilates i feel better in my mind and body than i did maybe when I was in my late 30s or 40s, because I was going through emotional stuff, because that stuff's gone, I feel better, but I'm showing up and I'm showing other women up as well. That's what it's all about. So who are your role models over 50? Well, I don't have any role models out there, to be honest. My mother was my role model and she's deceased. I'm not the type of person who looks at other people and say they're my role model i'm my own role model now I like that uh, i don't take anybody as an example we're all unique in our own way we are all unique not forget it in our own way we are unique and you should be comfortable in your own skin and have yourself as a role model before my mother passed away she was my role model and i don't think there's anybody else that could meet match her in who she was what advice would you give other women or men who are about ready to weather the next chapter after age 60? I don't think one should stereotype themselves, right? One shouldn't think that at 60, you're about to retire, or you're about to die, or you're about to this, or you're about to that. I think you should open up your thinking and be the person you want to be and the person you see yourself to be. If we think, oh, I'm nearly 60 months, for example, I'm 60 myself nearly, right. oh, a year off, we're celebrating my 60th birthday, but I just don't think that I should limit my thinking about how I should be as a 60-year-old woman. I should open up my mind and change that narrative and change the image of a 60-year-old woman. That's what you have to do. You cannot limit yourself and you should be open to change and change others in the process. That's exactly what I was going to add on is fight the advertising, fight the media in, in respect to challenging, challenging, hey, your audience isn't just... 20-year-olds or 30-year-olds, <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's other people. And in fact, we're an aging population. It's a known fact. The world is getting, the population is getting older. That's your demographic now. That's your market. So open up your eyes because these women or these men are your future. But yet we also in this generation have to reach out to the younger generation to kind of pull them up and bring them along and give them that guidance that we wish that society was asking for today and also positively influence them so that when they grow older and 
follow our footsteps, they'll have more confidence. The podcast that I do, there's tips for people who are under 50 and tips for people over 50 or women over 50. I have listeners now who are in their 20s listening because they're valuable tips from an older generation, which are going to be useful for anyone because it's tips under 50, which will help the younger generation move up. But also, if more 50, 60, 70 year olds are out there, the face of those individuals is changing. If you become visible and you're seen, then people will take notice and of not just who you are, but what you say. I think it's really important to show up, stand up and voice your thoughts and opinions because they're valuable. If somebody told me to put myself in a corner, that is not happening. I will not do that. I will fight till the end. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. This is a great conversation. Thank you so much.